Okay. Hello everyone. Today I am with the wonderful Hazel Barker uh, and as you can see here she is part of six books. I think I can see you've written these five and then that one over there you're that part of an anthology. A, yeah because that was what started me off on my writing career. Really? And that's why I brought it along and I got this trophy for it too. Wonderful. So Oh, you got the trophy for the... For my oh. story that went in the, the book. Tell me a bit about the story that went in the book. Oh, the story is about hunger. It's my experience during the Japanese occupation of Burma. Oh, really? And that's why it's called hunger, because you were so hungry and starving. And we used to eat, you know, we had a little pet dog, and the dog we used to bring bones from the butcher you know because Burma is a Buddhist country and we would take the bone off the dog and break it open my brother would break it open give us the marrow to eat and return the bone to the dog oh my goodness yeah we were starving that much oh my gosh I don't feel like anyone really these days understands what that level of hunger is like because even when you are homeless in Australia um, you can always go bin diving and you can always access charities. Um, that kind of hunger, that is very, it's nearly primal. Um, so, how long have you been in Australia for? Oh, since 1967. 1967. And where does your accent come from? My accent is part English, part Burmese, because I'm from a mixed race. Yeah. I'm English, Burmese, Indian, and uh, Portuguese as well. Oh, wow. Bit of Portuguese. I love Portugal. It was one of my favorite countries to visit. Oh. And I found that I had a roommate in Portugal uh, and she was delightful. She was absolutely magic when it came to just her perspective on life. Um, and I found, I recently found as well that the, um, one of the biggest majorities in Australia is now Indian too. So we're getting a lot of that really colourful, vibrant, rich culture coming through as well. So tell me a bit about your other books here. Well, the, uh, this is the one I told you that started me off. And the next one was this one. That was my memoir about my time during um, in Burma do, under the Japanese regime. So this takes me from pre-colonial times. I was only four when the Japanese entered. And from pre-colonial times just to explain what everything was like mm -hmm. and that went on to the end of the war and that's the second book part two which is mainly of what happened the civil war in Burma mm -hmm. after the British left and brings me up to the time I came to Australia and met Colin your husband yes yes my husband. and that was the end of this book and that is the last book the latest book after <laughs> orchids and, and oz uh, oz this looks beautiful by the way this looks really stunning i feel like as each i'm not sure if you did this intentionally but as each of these three covers comes along this one has the sepia tones in it um and then you've got the planes as well so it feels very um harsh isn't the right word but it feels like there's danger in it yes and because of the planes of the bombing yeah, yeah yeah and then you have this one that's these beautiful purple hues um, and you've got the nun down the bottom and it feels a bit more like it's mysterious like it's got um yeah the, the, there's uh, secrets and covertness there's movement in there but like in the shadows uh, and then this one is so bright and it, like intricately decorated with the uh, music score in the background uh, and the gorgeous orchid flower. It feels like there's life. It feels like rebirth nearly. It's gorgeous. Well, the, the covers are no credit to me. My publisher chose that. And who is your publisher? The Armour Books. Armour Books. Yes. Wonderful. Small, small publisher, but... She was, she was very pleased with my books and my manuscripts and took me on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a powerful story you have to tell as well. Um, memoir, everyone, this 
saying it's thrown around that truth is stranger than fiction uh, and memoir is a great way of showing that the memoirs are so powerful um, when you come through that so these ones these are based on your journey to My and through Australia 50 years 50 years of marriage and it ends with my golden anniversary. Oh, lovely. Uh, the picture's at the back. Right, let's get this one. <laughs> 50 years with Colin. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so that's why I've chosen the, uh, to speak about that book. Not only that it's the latest book, but it does talk about resonance, all the things we suffered. In fact, all of my books talk about hope you know and faith yeah that you will come through things no matter how much suffering you had yes because that one begins with the um this beginning of our marriage and the loss of our baby ah yeah and so it was very traumatic and how we recovered from that slowly it took us many years but yeah 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 it's again um you've gone through so much and then to continue to go through so much um it's just such a powerful story and it's not it's not something that only you have gone through either so many people can read this and see themselves and see parts of their own story through this and being able to share that is so powerful so well done These and are, i'm hoping you know that they will take courage and realize that you can find happiness in other places as well absolutely absolutely i feel like it's got a lot to do with mindset doesn't it it's got a lot to do with where you put your focus yes yeah and the other the second last book is this one count your blessings count colin's your bless story yeah that's my husband's story he he told me about his life and you know in the bush mainly and Whereabouts uh, did he grow up? He was originally from England, came out from the uh, two years old and grew up in Portland, Victoria. Ah, oh, yes, yep. Then they moved to Canberra because, you know, it, during the Depression, there were no jobs. And yep. Yes. Yep. That's where we met. <laughs> ah. um, and then you've got Chocolate Soldier. Sto Chocolate Soldier's story of a country is a story about Colin's uncle okay who mm, was a conscientious objector and worked during in the blitz during the blitz in London oh wow and and after that when the blitz was practically over when they when they turned their attention to Russia and left England comparatively alone yeah they he volunteered to work in china because china was suffering from the japanese then yeah and so he went to china and worked there too he was an ambulance working as an ambulance driver okay yeah in the front line so why the name chocolate soldier the chocolate soldier is really i gave it that name because they were trained in Cadbury's factory. Oh, no way. In, in, in England, <laughs> they had the big manor farm and they, were, they could smell the chocolate all the time they were working, the six weeks training that they had. And when they did some trips, you know, training, sometimes Lady Cadbury would give them some chocolate sent over <laughs> for the training. <laughs> Because they were conscientious, you know, they were Quakers. Yeah. Cadbury's were Quakers. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Cadbury's factories, when I went um, over to the UK, I found out as well that they were one of the first companies to, um, they employed a lot of women and they offered free childcare and schooling for the uh, children of the people coming through. So yeah. uh, Cadbury's has um, quite a, it's got a very rich history rich history because of chocolate um but they've got a really um they've got a really good heart uh, yeah. in a lot of what they have done in the past and where their foundations were uh, that's such a that's so incredible oh 
I, I really like that name for it. <laughs> I was looking at it and I was like, did you did you get chocolates in the shape of soldiers or what? But that's beautiful. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so tell us a bit about what you'll be speaking uh, at the festival about. Well, I'll be speaking mainly on opera, orchids and oars. In other words, I'll be first of all talking about resilience, how in general people can overcome that and finding something that suits them, uh, that they love and they should try and have a hobby at least. Yeah. Sometimes it might be music, sometimes it could be art. And, and I'll go through how we then give an example of how we overcame it. First, first of all, but Colin found a hobby and I, you know, turned to writing. Writing is very therapeutic. Yes, yes and, it is. And that all that and telling them, you know, trying to instill a bit of courage into them if they have been through that, but everybody has been through some suffering or the other. N to what some degree some yeah sometimes it might be just a little bit i think it's you can only compare it to your own um so you can't compare someone else's suffering no. to yours um you can only compare your own suffering to other forms of your own yeah. um it, because everyone handles everything so differently um as you were saying to get through what a lot of people would have just given up on um, you manage to push through, you manage to yeah. find faith and you manage to find hope in what a lot of other people would have seen as completely hopeless situations. So that's incredibly powerful. But we can't compare that suffering to someone else who might have a lot of familial stuff going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these are such powerful books. They're really amazing. I hope everyone grabs a copy of these because... Again, like I said, truth can be stranger than fiction, and these are incredibly inspiring stories. <laughs> um, so, where what's coming out next for you? Is this going to be the last book that you do, last or do you of have my memoirs? Last of your memoirs, yes, because you know you never know when you'll be called. I'm already eighty-five at the moment. No way. <laughs> I thought you came in, when I saw you get out of the car today, I thought, oh, you, I thought it was, ex when I heard you on the phone, I was like, oh, she sounds like she's in her 70s. And you got out of the car and I was like, oh, she looks much younger than she sounds. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, 85, well done. <laughs> I feel thank like you you'd much. be congratulated for reaching <laughs> 85 these days. Yes. Well, I have one last uh, book in the pipeline. It's The Soprano. Ooh. It's a, a true story based on fact. I mean, but uh, I've added it to embellish it and all that because all I could find in my research was about her life, her life as a soprano. Yeah. And but then I interviewed her, her daughter who now lives in Milan. I interviewed that and I told her I'm going to write a book and she said that's fine, she didn't mind me writing. And I went to the libraries and found out things where she was educated because she's an Australian, she was born in Hobart, yeah, not, not in Hobart, in Hope Island. Hope Island. And then she moved to Hobart, so the whole librarians from Hobart were very helpful to me when we went over. So that's. I like it because it had war in it as well as singing mm -hmm. and because I was born you know, and I went through World War Two, she helped in the resistance in, oh because gosh. she went to Italy, she, her ambition was to sing at La Scala which is the top opera house of the world of yes. total acclaim and she married an Italian, settled down there and during the war, of course, because she was Australian, and Australia was at war with Italy, she, she was interned, and her husband managed to use his influence and get her out. Oh, wow. And when she came out, then they went to live in there, in Bergamot, in their little villa there. And that's when 
there was a lot of bombing in Milan and uh, the soldiers used to try and the airmen used to try and hide in the hills and yes. the resistance workers would help uh, help them and they'd had nowhere to hide some of the pilots and they asked for Richie Bell and she got involved even though it meant that you know if the Germans knew of it yeah so they were helping a lot and I love that part oh. as well as a soprano because I was so interested in opera. Yeah. Because my psychiatrist told me to go to opera. He said that's very helpful, and that, that's why it's in there because it's <laughs> one of the things that helped me recover too oh, from the wonderful. loss of my baby. Yes. Yeah. And now we grow orchids. Oh, beautiful. My husband is always winning a few orchid, uh, you know, prizes for his orchids <laughs> and all that. Oh, wonderful. Well, does he put any of the pictures up online or is there any way for people to find his orchid photos? Um, uh, or any way to find the prizes well, that he's Well, I won? put a few on my blogs. In, you Excellent. Know, in, but uh, I, we try not to advertise it so much. Not the orchid bits because things do happen yeah um how um how can people find your blog where, where do they find your blog at oh you know, the blog is actually all my friends know it and and, and it's oh here it is beautiful so uh, it is at Hazel M. Barker at uh, dot wordpress dot com. So to read about Colin's orchids uh, and opera and all of Hazel's journey and all of Hazel's blog, you can find her at Hazel M. For Mary uh, Barker dot wordpress dot com. So we'll put that one in the notes underneath the post as well. Thank you. Um, but yes, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming today, Hazel. I know it was it was a big mess to get here in the first place. Oh, it's like I can't give directions very well. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad you were able to make it. This has been really inspiring to see. So I'm, I'm, I feel like a, pr a proud, uh, I feel a pride that you're coming to speak at the Writers' Festival Thank and help you. share your story. It's really powerful. I can't wait to read some of these and find out more about this side of history. I feel like a lot of people, when they focus on something like World War II, they focus on Germany, England or US, um, and to know that it was far more widespread, that it really did hurt the entire world. Um, and to see the resilience of people. So this is part of our festival's theme this year of growth and resilience. And you've just hit all of that. Um, the level of resilience you would have needed to get through that would have been phenomenal. And I'm so glad to see that you're here today. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you, Rianne, and for having this interview and also inviting me to speak at the festival you are very welcome i'm so happy to have you so please come and see hazel on the 9th and 10th of september this year and you can ask her all of your questions and get hold of her books and then you'll be able to find out more about her journey so it's not only great for learning about history but also about growth and resilience of all of the people here at the writers festival so have a great day. We'll see you in September. See you. And they're only $20 a book. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. $20 a book. It's a pittance. Come and get your books. <laughs> <laughs>